This is Sarah, and today I'm going to walk you through how to build one of these adorable little noodle spawnlings. First of all, you're going to need the appropriate files. All of the STLs can be found on the link in the description of this video. I have a blog post that will walk you through how to do this, but if you want some more help, I'll hold your hand while you go through the birthing process. So yeah, let's get started. For this project, you will need a 3D printer in order to produce your parts. The weird thing you will require is a 7mm and 6mm magnet. This is to attach the head to the body of your noodle. Or, if you can think of some other way to do it, feel free to improvise. You'll also need a marshmallow board. Or if you're savvy, you can make an LED blinking implement of your own. There are two trays of parts you will need to print first. One of the gray parts, and a second of white parts. These are all of the pieces and what I refer to them as in this instructional video. You should have eight fibulas, eight tibias, four foot meat, four toe meat, one pelvis, one skull, your two head frame pieces, and of course, four shins and four femurs. Let's begin by crafting a leg assembly with some of the gray bones. Grab one of your femurs and orient it so that the two mounting holes are facing down. You will then need two fibulas and two tibias. The fibula bone is very slightly longer than the tibias. Now get a piece of raw filament from your spool. You'll need to cut a bunch of 7 to 8 millimeter pieces. These will act as your rivets. The short tibia pieces will attach to the topmost hole. Place a tibia on either side of the femur and thread one of your rivets through all of the holes, so that a small piece of material pokes out on either side, like this. Press one side of your bone sandwich firmly against your bench, forcing the filament piece out the top as far as it can go. With the tip of your soldering iron, gently press on this extended tip and flatten it slightly. I tend to move in a circular motion to achieve a uniform head to the rivet. Wait a couple of seconds for the end to cool, and then quickly flip the whole assembly over and press the head of your rivet firmly against your bench. This will force the rest of the filament out the opposite end. Use your soldering iron and add a head to this side too. You may want to flip the assembly back over in order to sculpt the end of your rivet into a uniform shape. Make sure it has a slim profile and isn't a huge glob. Once this is done, your tibias are now parallel bars, and the rivet should act as a nice joint piece that allows them to swing back and forth freely. Locate the remaining bottom hole and sandwich two of the longer fibula pieces on either side, repeating the same process. Once this is done, you have two sets of parallel bars that can swing freely, but aren't so loose that they flop around. Now it's time to attach the shin. Orient the shin bone so that the two holes on the end are at the top. Sandwich the shin between the two bones of the tibia and the two bones of the fibula, lining up the holes. Press one side of the assembly flat against your bench so that the filament extends out the opposite end. Then use your soldering iron to make the rivet's head. Do this to both pieces of filament, and then flip your assembly over, repeating this step with the opposite side. Again, you should go back and forth to make adjustments until the heads of your rivets are clean and uniform. Once this is complete, you'll have a tiny little noodle leg that can fold into itself and extend out boldly, like this. Wasn't that fun? Time to repeat that whole process three more times! Once you have a complete set of four leg bone assemblies, you will need to add the foot meat and the toe meat. First, locate the end of the shin bone. When you fold the leg up, this should be the shorter of the two bones. Assess whether or not the end of the shin bone fits into the slot of the toe meat. Since all 3D printers are a little bit different, it might be too loose or too tight. To alleviate the looseness, I use a roll of paper tape and wrap a small strip around the end of the shin bone a few times to help it fit. You might need to experiment with how many turns it takes to make for a snug fit. For me, it's one and a half. Once you figure out your fit, take one of your foot meat pieces and thread the shin of your leg assembly through the clearance slot so that the end of the shin bone is poking out the opposite end like this. Then take your toe meat and press it firmly onto the end of your shin. Once the toe meat is in place, you can then attach it to the foot meat by pressing the two together. You should now have a fully assembled spawnling foot. Now repeat this step three other times. After you finish assembling all of the feet, you must now load them into your pelvis. But first, 
you must press your magnets into the pelvis and the skull. So take your 7mm magnet now and lodge it deep into the center of your pelvis. Use a long, blunt object, if needed, to make sure that it's inserted as deep as it can go. Then take your 6mm magnet and let it attract to the opposite side of the pelvis. Now that you know what the corresponding orientation is for your other magnet, you can then press it into the skull thusly. The two should stick together like this once you're finished. It's time to load the pelvis with the noodle legs. Take one of the legs and locate the end of the femur. Press this end into the holes of the pelvis as deep as you can. Now that the legs are attached to the noodle pelvis, you can stand the baby up. All right, you're almost done. Your last bit of plastic welding will involve assembling the head. Grab your skull piece and the two frame parts. Locate the frame part that has a notch missing from the top center. You mount this piece first. The tabs of the frame piece will mount below the tabs on the skull. Since the frame pieces are made to cross over one another, you'll be attaching the frame to opposing sides. It's easiest to take a piece of filament and flatten out one head of your rivet first to make a pin. Drop this pin through one of the tabs of the skull from the top so that the extra material is poking out the bottom. Then thread the tab of the frame onto the filament extending out the bottom. Cap off the opposing end with another rivet head. Then repeat this process with the opposing side of the frame. Once you have one piece attached, the remaining frame piece will mount on top of the one you just welded in place. Repeat this same process and you'll have equipped your baby with a nice roll cage for its noggin. Lastly, you'll need to fill the empty noggin with something. If you happen to have a marshmallow board, it will fit snugly into the skull perfectly. Once you add your blinking implement, you can drop the head of your noodle spawn onto the pelvis. The magnet should attract it and keep it in place. You've now made a baby! It will keep you company always. Talk to it, soothe it, tell it your secrets, and keep it warm this winter. And oh yeah, be sure to take a picture and tweet it to me and Noodle Feet, at Spetku or at Noodle Feet. So you might have noticed some uh, twinkling going on inside of the noodle's head. Uh, this is a marshmallow board which I designed. It's equipped with two red LEDs as eyes that blink periodically and a tiny little beeper, which is that black rectangle on the board. It's powered by a coin cell battery uh, down on the bottom there, and it fits perfectly inside the head of your noodle spawnling. Uh, if you want to support me a little bit in uh, the development that I do on Big Noodle over there behind me, uh, you can purchase one of these on my Tindy. I'll put the link in the description. Um, it's a couple bucks, but um, I don't know, this is how I make money. And they're cute. Just, uh, I don't know, don't put it in your mouth or anything. Just because it's called a marshmallow doesn't mean you can eat it. <laughs>